Hey guys, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here, and it is Sunday, so we are doing Breaches of the Week, and I would like to thank Chris Fowlon and Scott Bernstein for giving me tips and information on top of everything else that I looked up. This week is going to be nuts. Now, before I dive into everything, I just want to let you guys know that on top of actual data breaches, I've now, I'm now starting to include ransomware attacks that may have compromised data as well, because as you are about to see, we have a lot of activity going on, and this week is completely off the rails, and we're going to start with Equifax. Now, Equifax just received their fine for the data breach they had a couple of years ago, and that fine was $700 million, which is absolutely ridiculous. I think this is one of the worst data breaches uh, you know, in history, and it affected hundreds of millions of people. They lied on their numbers. It was historically low. I think $700 million is not even a slap on the wrist. So that actually is really annoying to me, but we are not going to get like we're not going to dwell on that because we got to move on. Now, the next one we're going to be talking about is Evite because they just invited over 100 million of their users to their recent data breach. That's right. Evite posted basically a notice that disclosed that an unauthorized third party had gained access to their servers starting on February 22nd, 2019, and they were able to access members' personal information. Now, no in uh, no financial information or social security numbers were affected. Um, though they were part of the breach, apparently. Now, and I quote, potentially affected information could include names, usernames, email addresses, passwords, and if optionally provided to us, dates of birth, phone numbers, and mailing addresses. So if you've used Evite, and odds are many of you watching this have, heads up to you. Moving on, we're going to be talking about Sprint, the mobile carrier, the major mobile carrier in the United States, by way of Samsung. Now, on June 22nd, and I quote, on June 22nd, Sprint was informed of unauthorized access to your Sprint account um, using your account credentials via the Samsung.com Ad Align website. The personal information of yours that may have been viewed includes the following phone number, device type, device ID, monthly recurring charges, subscriber ID, account number, account creation date, upgrade eligibility, first and last name, billing address, and add-on services. We don't know how many Sprint customers were affected by this, but Samsung had a data breach as it related specifically, apparently, to Sprint. Uh, and so if you are on Sprint with a Samsung phone, heads up to you. Moving on, we're going to be talking about Lenovo, uh, and we've got some large companies this uh, you know this week. Um, basically, they just had a high security, uh, a high severity, excuse me, security vulnerability that basically left users with uh, their network attached storage devices. These are Lenovo EMC network attached storage devices uh, with basically data exposed. And interestingly enough, uh, researchers were able to find 36 terabytes of exposed data, uh, basically 13,000 spreadsheet files indexed 36 terabytes of data. So if you have a Lenovo EMC network attached storage device, for your organization, you might want to update it and you might want to put it behind a firewall, fully defend it. Moving on, we're going to be talking about a company called NEO or NEO Urology. They are in Ohio. They just suffered a ransomware attack that cost them $75,000. And the reason why I'm including this is that attack was so deep, they literally couldn't dig themselves out of it for days, which means hackers were in their network, possibly scraping and stealing data before they actually hit it with ransomware. So if you have anything to do with NEO or NEO uh, Urology in Ohio, Heads up to you. Moving on, we're going to the country of Bulgaria. The National Revenue Agency, which is basically their national tax collecting agency, just suffered a data breach. Now, a person claiming to be a Russian hacker told the Bulgarian media that their group was responsible for the attack, and they basically they had sent um, this to in an email using a Russian address. Now, the email's author said they infiltrated 110 databases that, uh, that contained sensitive data, including uh, critically confidential information. They also claim that their attack affected 5 million Bulgarian citizens. Bulgaria is a country of 7 million people, so that is a massively significant data breach. And they basically had an initial leak 
of information that was 11 terabytes of size, and they're claiming they have, um, I'm sorry, 11 gigabytes in size, and they're claiming they have 10 gigabytes more on their hands. And so these records uh, in basically the uh, National Revenue Agency for Bulgaria date all the way back to 2007. So if you are a Bulgarian citizen or you live in Bulgaria and you are paying taxes there, heads up, you may have just been compromised by Russian hackers. Moving on, we're going to be talking about an airline called Wizz Air. They are out of Budapest, Hungary. They just sent out emails informing their customers that they discovered and dealt with some temporary technical irregularity. Now, they're erring on the side of caution here, and so they decided to lock user accounts and force them to change passwords, but they are not saying what exactly is going on. Now, the interesting part about this is that Hungary, being part of the European Union, will now force GDPR on Wizz Air or suffer penalties or possibly work stoppage for them if they don't fully disclose. So I'm sure we'll get an update on Wizz Air sooner than later. Next, we're going to be talking about NSYNC. I am not talking about the 90s boy band. I am talking about the QuickBooks cloud hosting firm. They just got a ransomware attack that left customers unable to access data. And I quote, the attack impacted data belonging to certain InSync clients rendering such data inaccessible. Now, as soon as InSync discovered the attack, InSync took steps to contain it. Uh, this included turning off some servers in the InSync environment. Apparently, this was incredibly disruptive, um, you know, to their uh, to their accounts, and hopefully, no data was stolen. But you know, given that they were able to get into the back end of the infrastructure and start encrypting it it is very possible that data was exfiltrated from there. Moving on, we're actually gonna be giving you an update on Slack. This is the communication system. I'm actually a big fan of it. In March, 2015, they actually announced that they had been hacked uh, in uh, February of 2015 and their central da uh, database holding usernames, email addresses, um, and uh, hashed passwords had been accessed. In some instances, phone numbers and Skype IDs uh, were hit and so, uh, Slack announced that in 2015 and basically said, let's go ahead and change passwords and all of that. Um, but they just came out and decided to basically say anybody that had a, an account during that period that doesn't have two-factor authentication or single sign-on, they're now forcing to change the passwords. Apparently, through a bug bounty program, they found out that more usernames and passwords than they suspected were actually out in the wild as a result of that 2015 breach. So if you're on Slack, make sure you've got 2FA. They obviously plugged that hole years ago, um, you know, so we're not worried about that in terms of security. But heads up, if you're a, if you're a full-time Slack user and you've been there for four plus years, you may be affected and you may have been forced to change your password and obviously enable two-factor authentication. Next up, I'm going to give you guys an update on the AMCA. Now, this is the American Metal Collect American Medical Collection Agency, if I'm remembering the acronym, and they have had a slew of health organizations hit because they're a billing company that all of these major ones were using. And the next one is Clinical Pathologies Laboratories, and they just had 2.2 million patients with their names, addresses, phone numbers, dates of birth, dates of service, balance information, and treatment provider information just got hit. They obviously join a slew of small health organizations and larger ones, including uh, LabCorp and Quest Diagnostics, both of which were hit due to the AMCA. So we're going to see this for a while on and on and on. Now, the next one I want to talk about is we seem to be having, and I've been tracking this, you know I do breaches of the week, and we are starting to see or rather, I'm starting to see a lot of patterns in this, and it looks like we have some kind of directed attack against, in the United States, local municipalities, government, school district libraries, and colleges that are basically being hit on a continuous basis, sometimes multiple institutions a day. Now, just in the last week or so, we can look at the following uh, counties, municipalities, city governments, local governments, school districts, libraries, etc., and colleges that got hit. Arlington County, Virginia, their payroll system got hit in a phishing attack. A number of employees were affected, but no citizen data, according to them. New Bedford, Massachusetts, uh, they had a ransomware attack as well. Um, that's the city. And so basically they knocked out computers at City Hall, police, fire department, uh, you know, and all of that. Gila County, Arizona, a ransomware attack there uh, that got hit. Um, Syracuse, New York, their school district had a ransomware attack on July 9th, and that may have affected um, things like payroll, student management, um, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it also affected email and their website and everything else. Monroe College, 
ransomware attack on July 11th. Email systems were compromised, so we don't know if uh, data was exfiltrated on top of the ransomware attack. The Henry County government in Georgia, the state of Georgia, suffered a ransomware attack in the same manner. Collierville, Tennessee, that government just had a ransomware attack as well. And Onondaga County, uh, which is in, and I hope, guys, I'm pronouncing that right if you're, anybody's there, Onondaga County in New York, their public library just had a crypto ransomware attack as well. And so that is a very serious thing. And those continue to ramp up. We, I have been reporting on colleges and local governments and all of that. And I could literally string all of these together and we could literally just do that. But there is something going on. There is some group organization or maybe even a foreign government that is targeting local infrastructure within the United States. And that is literally from the last seven days that I just showed you of disclosures. And finally, I want to talk about Russia, because if you don't think Russia is trying to influence things in other countries, and yes, I understand other countries such as the United States also have intelligence wings that try to influence things. That's not what I'm talking about here. We just got an interesting look, a very interesting look on the goings on and the back end of Russia's intelligence agency. Now, hackers successfully targeted the FSB, that is the Federal Security Service, in Russia and stole 7.5 terabytes of data, which included um, their ongoing projects to de, um, de anonymize uh, Tor. Tor is a private web browser that you can use to the dark web. So the FSB, the Russian FSB, has been working on trying to basically expose who is using Tor, scraping social media, including Facebook and LinkedIn. And I actually did a video on them doing that on LinkedIn, uh, basically posting fake profiles, trying to get high profile government officials to connect to them and communicate and infect and all of that. And also, interestingly enough, to help um, basically to help Russia split its Internet off from the rest of the world to create an isolated ecosystem for a lot of what they're doing. Very similar to what we're seeing um, done in China. Now, what's interesting is. Basically, um, the, the hacking group that hit them went under the name of Zero Virus, and it's all in lead speak. They reportedly breached SciTech, which is a major FSB contractor working on literally a whole bunch of different projects for the intelligence agency. Zero Virus then passed that data itself to a much larger hacking group called Digital Revolution, which I actually have been tracking and following for some time on um, social media, all of that, and the dark web. They sh basically share files. Um, they shared these files with media outline uh, with media outlets and put headlines out in Twitter as well. Now the BBC in Russia broke this story and described that the breach was possibly the largest data leak ever of a Russian intelligence service. And so we're not the only ones under attack. You know, the world is as well, but that is a very interesting look on the goings on of a, of a country that tries to influence other countries. And I've written articles for Forbes on that and on and on. So those are your breaches of the week. Oh, there's a lot of them. And again, thanks to Chris Fallon and Scott Bernstein. And if you guys have tips for me, please send them my way. I, I'd love to use them. And if I missed your name this week, please let me know. I'm more than happy to give you a shout out next week. And so hopefully you weren't affected. But given that it's Evite and it's Sprint and it's other massive companies like Lenovo, government, uh, you know, local and, and federal, I think we're all affected in this one. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And as always, stay safe and stay online. Thanks, guys.